you, Charlotte. Hi, Hi. Okay. Is this the new recruit? It is. Oh, my God. In Richmond, Scott's day is beginning with one of the youngest and tiniest patients he's ever seen, an eight-day-old chihuahua puppy. Mm, puppy. Brought in by a very worried owner, Charlotte. He was born with a cleft lip and cleft palate. Oh, my God. Let's just have a look and say, oh, wow, OK. The deformed palate means every day of the little chihuahua's life has been a struggle. Oh, oh sweetheart, you're already okay. looking hungry, like you're trying to eat your hot water bottle. Because he can't latch on to either his mum or a bottle, and he isn't putting on weight. At birth, the vet stitched up all the roof of his mouth and stitched up the hair lip, and the hair lip's just not holding. He's had to be restitched three times already. Something more permanent has to be done. With the temporary suture out, is he able to suckle at all? No. no. No, he can't. He hasn't got the vacuum that's needed to get the milk out. Yeah, I mean, look, he's already hungry, you can see. And she mate? There's now only one option left. More surgery. But this time under anaesthetic. A risky thing for such a young dog. Let's go into the consult room and we'll chat about this very fraught surgery we're going to have to do on you, little man. Come on, then. I have absolutely no choice. I need to perform surgery today. Yes, he's eight days old. Yes, he's a high-risk anaesthetic. But I have no choice because without performing this procedure, he can't latch onto mum, he can't suckle milk, and unfortunately, he will end up starving. Well, this type of patient and also this type of surgery is incredibly fraught and not something that we, we want to do. But in his case, if he doesn't have the surgery, he will basically fade away and starve yeah. to death. Yeah, the other possibility is that he can also aspirate the milk, breathe it in and die suddenly. And you've only had him for eight days, but I can tell you, quite smitten, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, he's stolen my heart. Absolutely in love with him. He's like a member of the family already. And I've been hand rearing him for the last eight days. I'm so in love with him already. Well, I'm gonna take him downstairs and see the team. Say goodbye to your little man. General anaesthetic for an eight-day-old puppy is never good. It's never something you want to do, but it really is his last hope. I'm just scared that he's not going to make it. Hi, guys. Hi, you? Hi. Right, so we've got a, a difficult job in our hands today, guys. So we're really going to have to keep our wits about us because you can just see the size of that hair lip. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's really sad. But now, unfortunately, the temporary sutures that were put in at birth, you can see, have just blown and now he just can't clamp down. He can't just get the suction that he needs to, right. to suckle properly because you can see there's actually a little tiny, tiny, tiny little hole just there, like a pinhead, but still yeah. it'll be too big and he won't make it. So we do need to perform an anaesthetic and surgery on this guy. Nurses Nathan and Reagan will assist with the challenging task of anaesthetizing such a tiny patient. It's a anaesthetist nightmare, that is. Yeah, well, I think it's anyone's nightmare. Yeah, you know, a young, young animal, old animal, we all know that they are the riskiest. And he won't make it if we don't do this. All right, let's start the process. Just a little bit of anaesthetic. Everyone cross your fingers and toes and paws. Because we have to do surgery on his head, mm. we can't have his head in a mask. No. Mm. So when we get down to a point where we think that he's deep enough, we're going to quickly flip him round. Okay, and then Reagan, if you can extend his head, and then I'm going to hold down his tongue and try and get the tube in. All right. First task to be tackled is to try and navigate the anaesthetic. Can we place a tube down his throat? Can we place a tube in his nostril? Let's give it a go. So um, you're going to pull the mask off and you're going to spin him round to me, okay? Ready? Three, two, one, go. Scott is hoping a narrow tube down the throat will be the most effective way to administer anaesthetic to his tiny patient. But it's proving more difficult than he thought. The tiny little head has a really big tongue and gets in the way of our ability to look and see the larynx and pass that tube through. Yeah, just going to have to gas him down a bit more, it's too light. What is he on now? Is he on five? Four, is on four. So put him up to five. I think what we'll do this time around is we'll just try straight onto this. So we'll go into his nose mm -hmm. and try this. 
Because he's so small, he's got such a fast metabolism, so he's quickly removing the anaesthetic from his system. So he's giving us such a tiny little window to perform this microsurgery. It is really proving tough. Okay, okay. let's try again. Attempt number 52. <laughs> Not sure, but maybe. I know it's so difficult to tell, but can you see the bag moving, Rady? No. Oh, wait, actually. It's like it's sort of working, but not completely. So, yeah, so I'm going to take that out and we're just going to try and mask. Oh, that's really... Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so the new plan is basically can't get the tube down and he doesn't seem to be tolerating the nasal tube either, so we're going to keep him nice and deep. You're going to just put it over his nostril. I'm going to scrape. We're yeah. going to put it back on. Okay. All right. The pressure really is on Nathan and Reagan. They're the ones that are responsible for the anaesthetic, maintaining that and ensuring that he recovers from it. So it is quite a high pressure procedure. He's a tiny puppy. So I'm just going to scrape the edges, okay? And then we'll put him back on the mask. When we're all happy again, and Nathan, you think he's deep enough, then I'll be putting the sutures in. I feel that now he will be able to produce suction in order to feed for mum, and hopefully he'll go on to grow up to be a nice little chihuahua puppy. Bless him. He makes the cutest noises, doesn't he? Oh, man, he wouldn't go to sleep, and I feel like I need to now. That was tense. We've put three sutures in exactly where they need to be. He now has a nostril. He now has a fully formed hard palate. The fact that he fought us so much on the anaesthetic that he was screaming blue murder at points just shows his character, and that will really bode well for the future of this little guy. Yeah, gotta love him. <laughs> We did it. <laughs> Here he is. Upstairs, it's been an agonizing wait for owner Charlotte. So literally just out of surgery and it was very, very challenging, but he is as tough as nails. Now you can see why I want you to do it. Yeah. He's got such fright. He really does. <laughs> so we'll be taking the suture out in well, maybe 10 days, two weeks. We'll see how it goes. We've put a non-absorbable one in there, so it will stay for as long as we feel it's necessary Brilliant. until he's just a bit stronger and a bit bigger. Brilliant. But right now, he's done great. I think you need to name him. Why don't we call him Cliff? Cliff. Yeah. Yeah. Now to get him home, get him on mum, get him feeding, get him back to bright and alert like he normally is. You guys better get off. He needs to go and have a drink, and I think you need one too. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Thank you. <laughs> All right then, Charlotte. Take care, sweetheart. And you. Bye. Bye, little man. In Isleworth, cat rescuer Liz is turning up with three of her latest cases. I brought three cats in to see Scott today, very carefully selected from, from our little residential family. The first cat I brought is Mr Tiddles. We've also got Mr Woods, who's like an abominable snowman. And then there's Narnia, who's a sweet little petite black and white cat. And they're all ones that, although they're ticking along quite well, I want to make sure that their issues are addressed quickly, like if they need dentals, which are so important. I know Scott's told me how important it is to keep their mouths healthy. Liz runs a sanctuary that cares for hundreds of stray and rescued felines. We started off as rescue rehoming, but then we found there were cats that weren't easy to home, um, maybe because they're either feral or elderly or have health conditions that need lots of support. And we're, we're very vetty minded, so we try to keep up a good level of veterinary care for each individual cat. I'm That's... always amazed at your sanctuary how that many cats get on together. They really it's make friends. It's incredible, yeah. yeah. Oh, they it's hang beautiful. about together and form their little groups. And... Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, can we help Liz get these three into the consult room, please? In we go. Yeah, one. Whenever Liz comes in with her cats, I really want to do everything I possibly can on the one day. She's got 200 cats to look after, and I've got one chance to get them right. So, Mr Woods, I can feel... He's got lumps of hair here and there and everywhere, haven't you, my boy? So definitely we need to try and sort you out. Wow, can I just point out how beautiful his eyes are? He's got one blue and one green eye, which is amazing. The only thing I would say about that is that there is quite a lot of scientific evidence about the presence of blue eyes and the pigmentation in a white cat leading to deafness. Yes. Quite an interesting quirk that we encounter with white cats with blue eyes is that some of them can suffer with hereditary deafness. So we don't know why 
there is a link between the colour of your eye and not being able to hear, but it is present in up to 80% of white cats. So we can hear that for sure. So, can you call them again, please, Liz? I'm just going to jump. Mr. Woods! Mm, uh, I think he probably is deaf in that left ear. The left side is where his blue eye is, so I think he is deaf on the left. Okay. Well, you've got one ear that works and lots of buddies. So, <laughs> there you go. Never mind. <sighs> Stinky. Mate, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Lucky you can't hear, because in this ear, I'll just say you smell really bad. Sorry, but you do. A little bit of a spruce up. That's what you need, isn't it, mate? Hey? Mr. Tiddles was next, wasn't it? Yes. He's very nice. Uh, oh. Thank you. Oh. Mr. Tiddles, alongside being very affectionate, also is a little bit smelly, and I'm picking up that he's got some quite bad breath, so I think he'll definitely need to have some dental treatment, but also he has a little bit of dark pigment discharge in his ear that we'll need to clear out. There we are. Hello, beautiful. Hello. You are lovely, aren't you? Next up is four-year-old Narnia. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're not making it easy, are you? So that looks like it's a little bit of snot coming out there. So she definitely has a little bit of a respiratory infection by the looks of it, Liz. Yeah, so I've been keeping her separate, actually, at home. Good. Um, All right, Liz, well, okay. if you say goodbye little Narnia and I'll look after her and the other two. And thank I'll you very much. once I've all woken up. That's lovely, thank all you very right. much. Be a good girl. I shall be looking forward to seeing them later, hugely. And they're such characters as well, so it would be lovely to, to know that they've had everything done and, and we're on the right road to having happy, healthy cats. All right, Thank you. see ya. Thanks, Jessica. Bye-bye. What are you doing? You're crazy, aren't you? Crazy. Now you've only got the two of us. Is that going to be <laughs> enough? Because I know, I like three people on hand at all times. <laughs> So is this the first time you've had Liz and her cats in? No, definitely not the first, and it absolutely won't be the last. It's fine. Okay. On to the next one. Next, Narnia has a badly congested <laughs> nose that Scott is going to flush. So we're just going to wrap her up in a towel, put the cat muzzle on, so putting a saline solution in one nostril, packing the throat and have it fly out the other nostril. Oh, oh man, that was gross. It's quite a lot for a little cat, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, loads. But I think that she is going to feel so much more comfortable, and as my nan always used to say, better out than in. Come in. With little Narnia now more comfortable, the team can move on to their last patient, Mr Woods. Oddly enough, I have an allergy to sort of certain long-haired fluffy cats. They just make my eyes itch and make me a bit sneezy. When I first met Mr Woods in the console room, I can tell straight away that he has some really smelly ears. It's actually horrible, isn't it? They have a lot of discharge coming out of them and they do need to be swabbed to assess for the type of bacteria that are growing within them. Half shaven. Half shaved. All right, let's flip him over. For some reason, nurses absolutely love performing grooming on cats. I think they find it quite therapeutic and it's a great way to see a before and after knowing that a cat's coming quite mangy and going out looking quite sleek. After nearly four hours, the marathon makeover on all three cats is almost complete. He's done. Oh, all finished. Right, so we've got healthy cat and half a cat and we're all wearing the cat. It's. Yeah. He certainly left his mark on the practice, hasn't yes. he? <laughs> Liz was concerned that Mr Woods might be a bit of a handful, and the only handful he is is a handful of fluff, because he's actually the perfect gentleman. Narnia and Mr Woods will be started on antibiotics for their nose and ear infections. All three of them should really have a greater quality of life after what we've done today, so now they're just sleeping off in preparation for being collected by the lovely Liz. Good boy. Come on. At the St Margaret's practice. Not going to the park, I'm afraid. David and his 18-month-old spaniel, Sega, are Sweet. arriving for an appointment with Scott's colleague, oh, Vet Phoebe. Hiya. Just got Sega Hi. for a check-up. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Come here. Look at you. You're so, so She's cute. got a little problem with her eyes. Oh, she okay. She needs to get checked out. 
Sega has been having discharge from both of her eyes, um, and one of them is uh, worse than the other. So it's been going on a few months. So we thought we'd just bring her in and make sure there's nothing untoward. Right, so it's this discharge that you've been talking about here. Yeah, and it's sometimes it's, it's you know, it's all the way down to her lips. But I don't know if there's maybe a little bit of irritation in there. Yeah. But yeah. I wondered if the cat maybe had nicked her and caused some trauma or yeah. um, if it was something else. So I just wanted you to have a look. Is the discharge always sort of clear or...? It's like, yeah, clear or ready mm. colour. Okay. Yeah. So that means it's probably less likely infection because normally if it's infection, it's greeny mm -hmm. or yellow. So right away, I can see what the problem is. Okay. Right in the inner corner of her eye, where the discharge is coming from, I can see some small hairs, and it looks like they're probably rubbing on the surface right. of her eye. Right. Oh, uh, yeah, so it's the same on the other side. There aren't many, just a few little hairs, but you know how uncomfortable it is when you've got an eyelash in yeah. your eye, so... And it's always there, it's going to be driving and It's always mad. there. It's not that uncommon to see hairs growing in abnormal positions on the eye in dogs. Normally when we see it, it's either along the bottom or the top border where the eyelashes are, not in the corner. If we were to pluck those hairs, then it would provide relief for her, but then they're just going to grow again. Mm -hmm. What I think would be better in Sega's case is cryotherapy, which is basically an ice pen, and you can use that to freeze the follicle, killing it and hopefully preventing recurrence of the hairs. We've done it before on eyelashes along the bottom rim right. with really good results, but I've never done it there before, in the, in so the corner, yeah. it will be a first for me. I think it would be a good idea to do it. All right, just do it. As it's yeah. a potential cure for Sorry, her. Sorry, Sega. Oh. Oh, <laughs> she thought she was coming in for a checkup, and now we're keeping her. Oh, oh I'm really yeah. sorry, little one. Come on. Good girl, that's it. How are those legs working today? Before heading into work, Scott is taking some time out with one of his favourite patients. Good girl, like a spring lamb. His own elderly dog, Betty. Today I'm taking Betty for a little walk to our local woods. It's our favourite place. It's a beautiful, magical place. It's a nice, calm place where a lovely, genteel old lady can enjoy herself. Come on, Nana. Here we go. It's a big week for Betty. With a birthday soon and her annual checkup, after a freak accident two years ago, followed by major back surgery. <laughs> Scott had been playing with Betty in the park when she suddenly collapsed. She's uh, burst a disc in her back, and some of the content of the disc is now squashing the spinal cord. Worst case scenario is she never walks again. I knew it was bad, but it's really bad. Betty's only chance of recovery was a risky spinal surgery, with no guarantee she'd be able to walk again. Clever girl, look at that. Fortunately, the surgery went well. That's it, come on. And after two weeks of intensive physical therapy, the terrier was able to take her first steps. This way, baby. Come with Daddy. Sure have a little rest. These days, Betty still has a few niggly reminders of the traumatic injury. Come on. Share a little seat here. It is true to say that Betty now has a disability. She does struggle to walk. She's weak on her left leg. I know. Oh, thank you very much. Hey, do massages first. There you go, sit there. Do you like massage, don't you? Ooh, there we go. She is sort of wonky, really. She's got a tail that doesn't really wag, it sort of goes round and round like a propeller. And she just struggles on long walks, so giving her a little massage and a little nana break in the middle is fair enough. Is that good? Hey. Snuff all those muscles. Hmm? We'll have to go and see your Uncle Michael soon, won't we? Hey, after he did his miracle surgery on you, fixed you up. Hey. Betty's also about to have a birthday. So, after the visit to Michael, and hopefully an all-clear, Scott is planning a special celebration. Mm, I love my girl. Yeah, I do. Betty is just about to turn 12, which is incredible, really, considering everything she's been through. So, in order to properly celebrate, we're going to throw her a 12th birthday party, which sounds absolutely bonkers, but we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> and it'll be great. <laughs> what do you think? Mm. Okay. Take that as a yes. The party is planned for later this week. 
Come on then. Let's go home. Come on. You need your nana nap, don't you? Come on, let's go. This way. Good girl. Hopefully we'll be able to reunite them soon. It should be a really quick procedure, I'm hopeful. OK. At the St Margaret's practice, um, it's time for nervous 18-month-old Spaniel Sager's surgery. Right. We had a bit of a hiccup at the start, a bit of a dramatic change of plan, but that's just something you have to adapt to as a vet. Her anaesthetic was nice and stable. Scott was able to come in really quickly and save the day. The eyelashes are no more, so, yeah, we're all happy. Sega will sleep off the anaesthetic before going home later today. Oh, haven't you been brave? I don't think she's going to be happy till she's home. <laughs> home and tucked up in bed. <laughs> Hello. Hiya. Who have you got there? <laughs> I've got a little bunny. Look at him. In Richmond... He's very sweet, he's very chilled. Practice manager Maz has brought in a rabbit that needs a new home after his owner passed away. So I was thinking, could Auntie Nathan maybe just make sure little bunny is all OK? Yeah, I'm sure I could have a yeah. quick look. Get me a little bunny. There we go, what a good bunny. What I'm going to do is start off looking at the teeth because with rabbits, because their teeth constantly grow. Oh, OK. And a lot of rabbits now, they've got malocclusion, which means their teeth don't match up and they don't grind down, so they often grow really long. Yeah, so those teeth are quite mislined. Oh, yeah. But certainly could do with a little trim. So that just in between those teeth there. So it yep. stops me catching on the tongue. And I think, you know, this would really help with those two teeth meeting up again. Good boy. That's one side done. All right, all right, all right. Now it's just onto the other side. Oh, his little heart's going crazy. Yeah. Yep, that's the other side done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's going to be better, though. Have you got any ideas for a home yet? I'll take him home tonight to make sure he's OK and he's eating all right. I'm sort of the only human that this bunny has right now and I suddenly feel very parental with the whole situation, a bit of a sense of responsibility that this little guy's going to be looking at me for some kind of guidance and I'm his mummy for now. <laughs> so what are you going to call it then? <laughs> if you name him, then you keep him. But he does need a name. He's my little buddy. He's my little buddy. <laughs> Come on then. Back in Isleworth, cat sanctuary owner Liz has arrived to collect her three patients. I'm not really missing them because I know they're in good hands, but I should look forward to seeing them. Yes, very much. <laughs> Goodness me, look at you, Mr Woods. Oh, wow, look at that lovely fur. Oh, great, that must be all nice, mustn't it? Hey, oh, if you weren't hit to... with the ladies before, you're yeah. definitely going to be with a new hairstyle. It's feel like a new man, nice aren't you? That's lovely. Oh, you're a very lucky pussycat, aren't you? So while she's snuggle on him, yep. Mr Tiddles had uh, seven teeth <gasps> removed. Gosh. So we've had to remove um, all those teeth, but he's going to feel so much better yes. with them gone. Oh, oh, that's really good. He's such an affectionate cat. It'd be he nice really to is. see him all comfy and happy. But this, yeah. madam... <laughs> wow. She went from a lovely demure feline to uh, a caged beast when you try to do anything to her. Really? One of my uh, nurses has a nice battle scar all the way down oh, her arm to no. prove it. So, but there you go. Oh, so, goodness me, Narnia. So she had some pretty mucky ears, so we've cleaned out her ears. But the bigger thing, which was actually quite rewarding and disgusting in equal measure, was flushing her nasal passages and a huge big Ooh. lump of snot came flying out. <gasps> so by flushing that out, it's going to make a massive difference to her quality of life immediately. And, and yes. I actually feel already she's breathing a lot quieter and a lot oh. better as a result. I think all of our cats at the sanctuary, they're like a family. And our team of helpers there are so passionate about them and so proactive with them. And the work we do means everything. It's part of my life, seeing that we can help these cats and do something positive to give them a good life. I'll take the heavy one. You take okay. Princess, right. troublemaker. <laughs> All right, and let's get you out to that car. 
for someone that looks after so many cats in her own house, gives up so much of her time. She's an absolute marvel. She is the queen of cats. So you're all very lucky pussy cats, aren't you? Hey. <laughs> Up we come. At the St Margaret's practice, it's also time for Phoebe's patient, Sega, to go home with owner David. Hello, There puppy. we go. Sega. <gasps> Hello. Hello. Oh. How are you doing? You all right? <laughs> As soon as Sega came up the stairs, she went bounding into David's arms. Obviously, we have to do procedures on animals and we don't like to separate animals from their owners, but it's always lovely to see them reunite again at the end of the day. Everything went well. We tried to use the cryo pen and when we were freezing the hairs, we noticed that they were a lot deeper that down than we thought. So Scott had a look at it as well and we think it's a dermoid cyst, okay. which is a little patch of abnormal tissue in an area where it shouldn't be. But in her case, that little bit of abnormal tissue is growing hairs that shouldn't have. So we've removed that in its entirety. Okay. And then hopefully she should make a full recovery and no more hairs. I'm glad she's not going to have any of that irritation anymore. Yeah, exactly. She'll be able to just swim and run and do what she normally does without any of that irritation. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. She should feel a lot more comfortable. She's obviously been through a bit of a trauma today. She's feeling quite sorry for herself, but I'm glad she's okay and it went well and uh, she can, you know, get on the road to uh, recovery. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> Soppy dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's home. Hello! Hi! Oh, wow. <laughs> A little handful of cute there. A few days later, Scott is making an important house call to check on tiny cleft palate patient Cliff. So that's proud mum Dolly, yeah? It is. Bless Hello. Her. Hello, you about to feed your babies? Cliff's holding his own with his brother and sister. He may be the smallest in the litter, but he's certainly not the quietest. But I can see at the same time that those sutures and just the uh, abnormality that he suffered with is going to mean that long term he's going to struggle to latch on and consume yeah. as much food as his brother and sister. So I would suggest that we do kind of supplement him with a little bottle from time yeah, to time. Yeah, definitely. Funny yeah. you should say that. Ah, I think look. you should do the honours with this one. Oh, yes, please. Look at this. <laughs> Some. It's a really wonderful, special moment when you get to bottle feed a puppy because they are looking at you like their mum. They're pouring at you with their feet, trying to sort of pressurise the milk as if they were latched on to mum still, and it's a very special moment for me. Well, I think if this feed's anything to go by, he won't be long before he's catching up with his brother and sister. No. Hey, little man. No, no time at all. Hey. Good boy. Oh, oh. Good girl. That's it. <gasps> Uncle Michael's house. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if he's there, shall we? It's the week of Betty's 12th birthday. Yeah. But before the celebrations get underway... Hello. Hello. Hey, how you doing? How's it going, mate? It's you all right? Coming in. Hey, Betty. She's Hello, due for her annual post-op checkup with Scott's friend, specialist surgeon, Michael Hamilton. Oh, that's right, Betty. There we go. Normally, whenever I see Michael, it's for a social visit, but this time around, I am a client. I'll tell you what then, Betty. So I'm just going to give you a little stroke slash neurological exam. <laughs> <laughs> Betty is an old girl who suffered a major injury. OK, that's uh, pretty good. So I'm really just coming to see Michael to make sure that she's not painful and just to get a little bit of reassurance. Pretty strong. Well done. Not Anna. bad. Good not girl. bad. She doesn't look sore to me wandering about. She's not walking normally, clearly. She's just a little bit weak and weaker on her left side. Well, I mean, it's, it's a massive relief for me that she's not in pain. And sometimes as an owner, it's really hard because you yeah, have that emotional yeah. vested interest to go, oh, yeah, are they painful? And you don't want them yeah, to be. Yeah, I know the feeling. I know the feeling. Yeah. yeah, it's all fine, isn't it? The cause of all her problems is the injury that she sustained 18 months ago. And primarily the kind of an explosive kind of concussion within the spinal cord. There's nothing we can do about that. So I think, relatively speaking, she's she's doing actually pretty well. All right, Betty. Yeah. 
Whitney. What it's good to see you again, though. She's going a bit grey, like me, but she's in great spirits, not painful primarily, um, and not getting worse. I mean, I think she looks quite good. She's an older girl, then. Yeah, we all have know, good days I mean, and bad days. Yeah, absolutely, so. absolutely. I mean, I think she's managing admirably. You guys are managing admirably. Yeah. But um, I think for, how old is she again, 11? She's 12. 12 year old dog, I think she's kind of doing all right. Yeah. To know that Betty is not painful and that she is behaving as expected from the surgeon himself is the most important part for me. There you go, Uncle Michael said you're not painful yeah. and that's good. What do you reckon, Branston? Are you wondering what type of dog he is? <laughs> oh, are you giving him your ball to play with? In her home in Surrey, practice manager Maz is introducing Buddy the Bunny to her dog, Branston. Not sure he's going to go for that game. No. It's pretty cool seeing the two of them interact together. It's so nice to see that Buddy's really chilled and Branson's quite happy with this long-eared puppy that's been brought into the house. Right, Benny, you've got to talk Daddy into keeping him. Just both be cute. Branston seems to be OK with the new arrival. Now it's time to win over Maz's husband, Chris. Hello. 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 Oh, hello. Oh, who's this little guy? <laughs> <laughs> To see well, that's <laughs> Hello. So Chris hasn't freaked out that Buddy's here, but I think maybe if he has a cuddle, it might just start to seal the deal a bit. This is Buddy. Hey, Buddy. Here we go. Hello. I can't believe how chilled out he is. He's just... Isn't he? Isn't he? Laying there, not, not moving. He's really chilled out. And what are we, is he going back tomorrow and finding a home, or...? <laughs> um, it's funny you should mention that, actually. Brandy, look at Daddy. Can we <laughs> keep him? Can we keep him? Well, is this your idea, Brandy? Well, looks like we've got a new member of the family then. Yay! <laughs> it's a great result to know that Buddy's going to now be a part of our family and it's a great end to a great day, so happiness all round. Brandy, high five, you want to keep him? Yeah! Yay! <laughs> oh, welcome to the family, buddy. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Ready. A week after her eye operation, Spaniel Sega is enjoying runs back in the park, much to the delight of owner David. Good girl. Can you do a high five? High five. It's great being back in the park with Sega. She is in her element, running around and chasing the squirrels and doing all of those things that she likes to do. That's a stick. Where's the ball? Vet Phoebe is on her way to check on her little patient's recovery. Sega, come sit. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm all right. It's amazing to see her out here. Girl. Obviously, she's really good in the clinic, but she's just in her element here, isn't Absolutely. she? Absolutely. It's really brilliant when you get to see your patients out in the park living their normal lives rather than just seeing them in the clinic where they're a little bit unsure, a little bit uncertain. Sega's just transformed. You can see she's back to her old self. Yeah. Trying to take a stick off me. There you go, have it. Um, yeah, she's much better. She couldn't wait to get that cone off and just have a run around. Sega, good girl. Come sit. Let Phoebe have a look at your eyes. Come on, good girl. Let's have Thank a look at the pool. One. There we go. I think this is the first examination I've done in the park. <laughs> Aww, they're looking really nice. Sega's definitely on the road to recovery. A lot of the swelling has come down, but the stitches are all holding in place. So when those come out in a couple of weeks' time, they'll just dissolve on their own, then she'll be back to normal. As soon as she can get back in the water, then that's 100%. Yeah. But yeah, she's much, much better. <laughs> it won't be long, I promise. Sega is incredibly important to us. We can't imagine not having her now. Now that we've got her, we're just very relieved. It's not something that's going to just recur. So, yeah, we're very happy with uh, the outcome. She is the happiest dog I've ever seen. I think. <laughs> she wants to be friends with everyone. As long as she's got her stick and her ball. Yeah. You excited to see Betty for her birthday? In Richmond, it's time for Betty's special birthday party, and Scott has invited clients, family and staff to join in the celebrations. Ah! Hey! Oh, thank you. Betty, look, they're all for you. Look. Look. Hi. Hi, Betty. Hi, everyone. Ah, hi, everyone. 
Betty, what? Oh. <laughs> Hello, dog that looks exactly like Betty. Betty, come and look, look, it's a doppelganger. This party for Betty makes me think back to everything I've been through with her, but also having all the wonderful clients come in with their dogs and reminding myself of all the journeys I've been on with them. So many dogs, a real kaleidoscope of canines. Beer for dogs, you know me so well. <laughs> hey, Bobby, how, how are you, you mate? Good to see you. Okay, best wishes for Betty. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, good, and still wagging that tail, yes. what she has left of it. <laughs> Do you want to party cats? Yeah. There you go. Happy birthday to Betty. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow. How cool is that? Betty is an integral part of our family. She was actually with Scott before we met, so she predates me, and boy, does she know it and let me know it sometimes. But she's as much part of the family as any one of us. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Obviously, Betty's a very, very special dog to me. And she went through a fairly significant injury a couple of years ago. And with the help of colleagues and family and friends, she made it through. So it's wonderful to be able to share this special moment with you guys, because I know how much you care about your dogs as I care about mine. When you think that 12 years of your life, that's a huge amount of time. And I've had Betty right beside me the whole time. You know, she's been a constant, steadfast companion. So celebrating 12 years of her life is also celebrating 12 years of my own. So it's pretty special. So thank you so much for sharing your love with my little dog on a special day. So thank you very much. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.